Welcome to Your Prayer Intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. And we welcome your prayers at WQPHradio.org. Oh Mary, send my prayers to heaven. Don't let another day go by. You can ask the Lord to help me. When my cross gets heavy and my soul is dry, Oh, Jesus, hear my cry. Oh, Mary, send my prayers to the sky. Along with all of my intentions, every word takes flight. Hello and welcome to another edition of Your Prayer Intentions. Very happy to be here with you today to pray for you and pray with you for your prayer intentions. I want to start out by reminding everybody that the new indulgence calendar should be out by the time you're hearing this. And of course, there's a new app on the site which highlights the indulgence calendar, so you're going to want to check that out. And you can download the indulgence calendar right from our site at wqphradio.org. So take advantage of it, and if you have someone who has died and you wish to include them on the next indulgence calendar, send us the name either via the uh, prayer wall or email us at wqph893 at comcast.net. That's wqph893 at comcast.net. And we will be more than happy to include them in the August indulgence calendar if you didn't make it on to July. I also want to mention, even before we get to prayer requests and so forth, for those of you who may not know, that the former bishop of the area, Bishop Riley, died about 10 days, well, four days ago from the time that I am recording this, but about, I'd say about 10 days before this show is airing. He was a very fine bishop. I actually had interviewed him on my secular radio show, although I haven't been able to find the segment. I'm having some issues with some of my old archives from my secular show. But always a fine fellow in advancing the faith, and he will, of course, be part of our prayers today. Now, I want to get straight to our uh, gospel reading for the day. And... This is another one of those Gospels that is sometimes abbreviated and sometimes not. And we're not going to use the abbreviated version. We're going to read the same thing, the whole thing. And this is going to, of course, be a very familiar story to you, especially if you're a fan of The Chosen. It was a big big scene in Season 3. This is from the Gospel of Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had, yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her infliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned to the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? But the disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction." While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue's official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? 
Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put him, them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Tata Kamun, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and that she should be given something to eat. Now this gospel has a lot in it. You have the healing of Veronica and the raising of Jairus' daughter. Now, obviously he's telling people several points here. He tells people not to let folks know about him raising the dead. Now there are a few folks, the people who came to tell Jairus that your daughter's already dead, that obviously knew. Now, they might be able to convince themselves, oh, wait, maybe she was just in a deep coma, I thought she was dead type of thing. But still, I mean, if you think someone's dead, normally, you know, you, if someone has just died, you make sure. That would be a little bit interesting, but one of the things Jesus is doing here is trying to prevent basically everybody coming to him asking for their dead relatives back. Because if it was revealed that Jesus was raising people from the dead early in his ministry, I think the rush would have been astounding. Now, granted, he did raise the uh, son of the widow of Nain. Literally during his funeral procession. But it's something that, but Christ tried to keep this, at least this particular miracle quiet. For as long as he could. That's the type of thing that would have caused incredible fuss. But what's even more interesting than Jairus sticking with Jesus, even though he gets the word that his daughter is dead, yet he still has faith in Jesus. What's even more interesting is the story of Joanna. And traditionally, this woman, the woman healed with the uh, from the hemorrhages, is the person, the Joanna, who wipes the face of Jesus during during Veronica, I meant to say, not Joanna. Joanna, of course, is the one who uh, was uh, the wife of Kudzu, who was Herod's steward. But Veronica it was traditionally the person who wiped the face of Jesus during the you know, carrying of the cross. And she is convinced, you know, all I have to do is touch his thing. I don't have to have him say anything. I don't have to do anything. He can do this. She is utterly and completely convinced and her faith cures her without even Jesus' consent. And Jesus notices the power has come out of him, which in itself has a bunch of theological implications. In fact, implications too large to go into here. But notice what Jesus says to her when this happens. Jesus says to her, Daughter, your faith has, has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. Now, I submit and suggest that this is actually two different things Jesus is telling her. When he's talking about her faith saving her, he's actually not talking about the healing. He talks about the healing in the second thing he says to her. But he's talking about her faith saving her. Her faith making the difference for her in her life. Because a lot of people, there's a difference between having a physical healing and being saved from your sins. Her faith was such 
that it was taken as righteousness. Remember what it said about Abraham. Uh, Abraham had faith and it was taken as righteousness. Her faith in Christ was an act of righteousness. And that faith in Christ made all the difference. Because remember the ending of the Gospel of Mark. It talks about you know, whoever believes will be saved. Well, this woman believed. And she believed big. And she believed strong. And she believed so much that she figured all it would take was a touch of his tassel. And she was right. And this makes a huge difference. Many of us will never have faith that strong. Remember, Jesus himself in last week's gospel talks about the lack of faith of his disciples. Uh, at one point, uh, we're going to get to a story where Jesus' disciples are unable to cast out a demon from a man's son. And Jesus' reaction is, Oh, faithless generation, how long am I going to deal with you? Frustration. Because the faith isn't there. But Veronica had the faith. And had it strongly. And that strong faith cured her. But more importantly, that strong faith saved her. Now, will we manage such a faith? How can we manage such a faith? Well, the best way to get in that direction is the sacraments. Get communion regularly. Go to confession regularly. Read scripture. Do things that bring you closer and closer to your faith. And you'll be surprised what happens to you. Take these moments and make them something. Make something of your time and watch the fruit of that just bloom within you. And sometimes it'll be something for all the world to see, like Veronica. And sometimes it'll be something that's just private, like Jairus and his wife and daughter. But either way, if you take the time to tend to your faith, just like you would a garden, you'll see it grow and you'll be able to harvest the fruits of that growth. Now for prayer intentions. We are, of course, going to be praying for the repose of the soul of Bishop Riley. And we're going to pray for everyone who was on Bishop Riley's prayer list. We're very happy to do that. We have our standing prayers for the two Marianne's, for Lucy, for Nancy, for Jake, for the donors to WQPH, and we're very, very grateful to, the, to you, to the various priests and deacons in the area, especially the newly ordained ones. And we're going to pray for some people who are having issues at work. We're ha having prayers for people who are going on a pilgrimage, prayer for a person discerning a vocation, Prayer for someone who's struggling with habitual sin. A prayer for discernment in a situation. And now since we have this raising of the death, let's pray the first glorious mystery, the raising of Christ. And let's do this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first glorious mystery is the resurrection of Christ. We offer you, O Lord Jesus, the 16th decade on honor of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask of thee through this mystery and through the intercession of thy Holy Mother, love of God and fervor in thy service. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now at the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most in thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the resurrection come down to our souls. Amen. And now, for the intentions of the Holy Father, which is necessary for during an indulgence. Glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now the hour of death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray unto thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. We pray all of this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I want to give a little bit of advice before we get to our closing prayer, and I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, I want to remind everybody that WQPH is planning on a trip to the uh, Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. It'll come on the feast day of uh, St. Faustina. That'll be in October. And I also want to remind everybody that there's also going to be a thing at St. Bernard's in September on Wednesdays where they'll be showing episodes of The Chosen with Father giving a commentary afterwards on the episode and you know the Catholic Church and what what's biblical, what's not, what's embellished, what isn't type of thing. And I also want to remind those who do not know yet that St. Bernard's is now live streaming masses you can catch that at the st bernard's youtube channel where the masses are archived definitely worth a while now let's get to our closing prayer in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen O god of mercy as we reach out to those seeking you send forth your holy spirit upon this show this station those who listen to the show and those who carry the show to renew us in faith Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your son Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. 
We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want to mention something in passing. You've got to be careful about various videos that you'll see on YouTube. Uh, there's some that are put out by priests, and if they're put out by priests, they're, they're generally safe. But there's a lot of people who put out things, you know, this Catholic, this Catholic, that. And you never know what's canonical and what's not, and who's trying to do what with what. But there is a little video that is worthwhile. And it's a little video of a uh, Protestant proselytizer who kind of ambushes a Catholic man at the grocery store. This Catholic fellow had just happened to be, had happened to come from confession. And he's ha had every answer for this guy. Just a regular guy, by the way, not a theologian, just a regular guy. And it shows the value of knowing your faith of studying your Bible, of studying your catechism, of reading about your faith and learning about your faith. Because it's very hard to be taken unawares or taken by surprise if you study your faith. And it's been my experience, and maybe other people might correct me, that when people leave the Catholic faith, it's usually because they're upset about something, or sometimes they'll marry outside the faith and go along with the faith of the person they marry. I think that's a bad idea myself because uh, if you're ignoring something that you believe you, you, you don't give up God for anybody. But it's also my experience that the people who come to the Catholic faith tend to be people who start who are striving for Jesus and look at the early church fathers and as they're striving for Jesus they find the Catholic faith. But the best way to be a strong Catholic and a good Catholic is to be an educated Catholic. Don't let your education on what the church teaches end with your confirmation. Because if you have a, an education about the faith that ends at your confirmation, then you'll have a juvenile faith. Well, that's all the time we have. We'll see you next week for another edition of Your Prayer Intentions. Take care. A word from Father Henry. I want to welcome you all to the month of June, the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in recognition of uh, Jesus' apparition to St. Margaret Mary Alaco um, that began in 1673. Mary Alaco was a, a member of the Visitation Sisters and through her, Jesus asked for devotion to his sacred heart. And you may ask, why this celebration? Why the devotion? Sacred heart of Jesus is a symbol of God's boundless and passionate love for humanity. The heart is a seed of love, and it's an expression of Jesus, God's love for humanity, which we celebrate. We are not to be damned, because God has mercy for us. So we continue to pray to the Sacred Heart of Jesus uh, to win God's mercy for us and for the world and uh, to propagate divine mercy and God's love for us. And the values of um, the Sacred Heart of Jesus is a love for one another. So we love one another and then we inspire others to love and also we offer others Comfort. I have to provide comfort to others. These are the values of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and this celebration. And how are we to honor the Sacred Heart of Jesus? We have to reflect on the promises of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we know that Jesus gave these promises to um, St. Margaret Mary Alacoc, the Apostle of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And then we pray for the reunion of divided families. Uh, we need to pray for reunion of families that are separated or divided. And we also have to pray the litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, as well as contemplate um, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, probably with, with music, music, the food of his soul. Uh, we put a music uh, that has to do with the Sacred Heart of Jesus, or has to do with God's love for us, and then we meditate 
and God's love for us. Thank you as we honor this month and honor the Sacred Heart of Jesus. God bless you. On the WQBH community calendar, there's adoration at St. Bernard's Parish Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesdays from 8.30 to 4 p.m. And at St. Cecilia's Parish, there is adoration Fridays from 9 after the 9 o'clock mass to noon and Wednesdays after the 9 o'clock mass to noon. However, they're having problems finding people for the Wednesday adoration. So if you are available and would like to do adoration on a Wednesday, check with the office at St. Cecilia's Parish and sign yourself up because if they're not able to get sufficient people for Wednesday, they're going to have to drop that Wednesday adoration. So check in, see if you have the free time. And it's a great thing to do as we're getting ready for our Lenten journey because after all, Lent is a time time of reflection. Lent will be a time to look at ourselves. If we're going to get ourselves ready for Lent, and it's an early Lent and an early Easter this year, great way to get yourself prepared, adoration. So check out down at St. Cecilia's if you're free for that adoration on Wednesdays, and you can be a great help there. Hi everybody, I'm Father Elias, and I'm inviting you to join me on a Catholic pilgrimage to Japan in 2024. Come with me to visit and learn about the rich Catholic history of the land of the rising sun where St. Francis Xavier brought the faith. The persecution of the faith for over 250 years, the witness of the Japanese martyrs and saints, the story of the hidden Christians, St. Maximilian Kolbe's friary in Nagasaki, Mugenze no Sono, the Garden of the Immaculate, and also we'll visit Holy Mary Canon of Hara Castle, the largest wooden statue of Our Lady in the world, the atomic bomb miracles, and of course Our Lady's apparition at Akita, a most relevant Marian apparition of our times. We also visit beautiful Mount Fuji the atomic bomb museums in Hiroshima and Nagasaki ride the bullet train and view the cherry blossoms in springtime. We will have daily mass and rosary along with the liturgy of the hours and other devotional prayers. We will prepare for and make our consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary at her apparition site in Akita. Because of an increased interest, we are offering both a spring and a fall pilgrimage in the year 2024. For more information, please go online to CanterburyPilgrimages.com, that is CanterburyPilgrimages.com, or call 800-653-0017. That again is 800-653-0017. Hope you can join us. Hope to see you there. Ave Maria. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at Comcast.net. Let me repeat that. It's WQPH893 at Comcast.net. And we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.